Hello everyone and welcome back to Bricks and Dragons. Today we are working on our Star War or Star Trek, sorry, uh, role-playing game. Now, like I said before, this is going to be more of a um losing my train of thought here. Uh, more narrative um, is what I'm really trying to see. Um, so kind of sit back, relax. Uh, as I go through this, take this as an adventure. Uh, this is going to be done as a role-playing adventure, but it is going to be done more in a narrative session here. So um, whenever we come to something I think would be good for you to maybe have them do roles, uh, I'll kind of try and break in and we'll, we'll you know, kind of talk about this. Um, so what I have is I have a character. Um, we have Charles Wolf. Uh, he is our main character here. I do not have any secondary characters. So if you happen to notice the ship, this is actually from the Lego uh, Marvels series or whatever. It's their spaceship, but it works pretty good for a shuttle, at least to start with. Um, this would be a size one shuttle. I'm just going to, if this was going to be stats, which I don't have stats up here for, this would be a standard size one cargo shuttle. Okay. No weapons. He's been doing, um, some trading. He's out outfitted this with a nice comfy bed and that. So he's not on a, a thin cardboard thickness mattress or anything. So he's got a little bit of luxury. He feels like he's doing pretty good. Uh, and we have a contract to haul some ore from Starbase 354 going to Epsilon Delta. So in the process of taking things through, we're going to have him, uh, you know, he's kind of bebopping around. Things are doing pretty good. He's going to get waylaid by uh, some unknown assailants here. Okay, so we're going to have two small shuttles. Um, as I kind of bring him in, I'm going to forward him a little bit forward here. Uh, trying to look behind me so I can see where I am on the camera. All right. So as we have two small combat shuttles, um, or small combat attack ships, however you want to work them, um, <clears throat> I would say probably just combat shuttles. Uh, so that way they can hopefully try and steal some of his cargo. Um... Remember, I don't have him as an armed shuttle. He is an unarmed shuttle where they are armed. Um, they're going to attack him. Uh, if you want to roll to have him do some maneuvers, that would be perfectly fine. Have him get some maneuvers in. Um, in the long run, though, um, these guys are going to win out. They're going to knock his shields down and all that because he has no way of fighting back. Uh he's going to call for help. So he's going to be asking for help from anyone that's available to help. Of course, we come get aided by Starfleet. They will, after getting everything knocked down, they will get in, have someone transported. Um, it'll be up to you as a game master if you want uh, whoever the assailants are to transport the cargo out or if it's going to get lost. In the long run here, the ship will be destroyed. Okay, so that's kind of the premises starting off your characters. Now, I only have the one character, however many characters you want. Um, you know, that way they have that sense of we're doing okay, uh, but we're going to fail. So we're going to have these guys doing our pew-pews and shooting at them. Uh, ships on the verge of being destroyed. We'll have a Starfleet vessel chase these off just as the ship is about to be destroyed and uh, Charles here here will actually get uh, transported out of the ship ship is lost um, now with that the unfortunate part is and if this sounds familiar to like Star Trek or uh, not Star Trek Star Wars kind of but I, I just had the same kind of issue happen to me somewhere else in a in a different game and unfortunately, it's it's a common trope. So we have Charles here. I'll get him on a stand. Charles is now... Um, I don't have any map pieces out, so I do apologize. Um, 
this is my second time through, but I wasn't even thinking about getting a map out here. Because um, I'm going to be shifting things around quite a bit here. Um, anyways, as I kind of clear, clear my sinuses here a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, Charles will be sitting there on a, on a transport pad. His ship is destroyed. He will get uh, escorted to a room and he will ride out the rest of his journey going back to Starbase 354. Um, and here we sit. Uh, so he's now going to be sitting on Starbase 354 um, waiting to figure out what he's going to have happen to him. Um, he will get approached by Starfleet. Uh, and they're going to swing them a little bit of a deal. So this is where the deal kind of comes in. Let me grab another shuttle. Okay. So, I guess this is about as good as I'm going to get. If I can get the characters out of here. Um, Charles is going to be offered a old Federation shuttle. Which, as you can see, we have uh, <laughs> from the Creo line here. So he's going to be offered a shuttle from Starfleet for one, kind of trying to help him out because he's he's a free trader. Um, transporting stuff from Starbase 354 has been going to um, Epsilon Delta, which is also doing... Uh, they're terraforming a planet, and the cargo that was on there was actually from a uh, business syndicate called WebRu. Um, so he's being offered a, uh, the ability to have a shuttle uh, to kind of help him out, but it's no, nowhere near what he had. So essentially he's got a small cargo ship. He's got some seats in there, uh, but he doesn't have any bed. He's just down to a very small amount of cargo. Uh, kind of set our characters up here so they can kind of have a little conversation. And I don't have any more stands built, so um, we'll have to kind of work on this as we go along. In the future, I'll try to make sure I have more things ready to go. Um, So if you're being offered a chance to have a ship again, uh, he's going to take that opportunity, but it does come with a catch. Um, he's being asked by the one of the station's commanders um, to be a unofficial informant on anything that's going on in the area. Uh, as a free trader, he's got the opportunity to have eyes and ears on the ground um, to see and hear things that maybe the Federation doesn't. Uh, so that gives them an opportunity to have some more eyes and ears out for anything that's going on that might be um, important for the Federation. And if you're doing this, you may, you know, if, if the characters want to or the, the players want to bargain back and forth, that, that would make a lot of sense to me. Um, but as we work things out, uh, the main thing is whether you want to give it to the, uh, to the group that you're going to have working with you. Um, any fueling or repairs or whatever can be done by the Federation. Um, so you have an opportunity to always try and get your ship up and running as long as you're an informant. So even if you upgrade the ship or get a bigger ship or a different ship, you can still get things done on your ship from the Federation. Doesn't mean you're always going to be at the front of the line, but it does mean that you will eventually get stuff fixed from the Federation. Um, and I'm taking this from like how Deep Space Nine has it, where they're willing to fix other um, factions, vessels, and stuff like that, showing a goodwill towards others. So it's something that they're going to extend to him. They're going to, willing to give him a small shuttle to get back up on his feet, and he can go from there. So this is our, our starting point from this point on, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of keep working on this. So um, Charles is going to take that opportunity with the hope that maybe he can kind of get by. Um, so we're going to have Charles uh, end up at a bar. 
later on. Kind of move this over here. Um, kind of put it in line with some other shuttles. Ships that maybe he wishes he still had. Uh, Charles is going to be sitting there at a bar. Kind of having some drinks or whatever. And he's going to be approached by somebody else. Um, just because I need characters here. Trying to get uh, figures here so we can have... Um, I don't have tables and stuff like that out. I'm going to have to keep keep a little box with some of this stuff. I wasn't even thinking about all this. Um, he's going to get approached by somebody saying that they are here from the Webrew Syndicate. Now the Webrew Syndicate is out about 30 bars of gold press latinum for what his cargo was. So they're hoping to have a return on this cargo. So uh, he is going to have to repay them for the cargo. However, he comes up with the money, but it is expected that it will be done fairly soon. So we're going to have to try and come up with some way of doing this. Um, they're willing to knock off about half of that if he's willing to do a mission for them. So they'll knock off 15 bars of gold press latinum if he's willing to do a mission. Uh, so his mission really is he's got to go to a planet and rescue uh, two of the syndicate um, employees. So here he is. He has nothing uh, except for just a shuttle. Um, so we'll have to try and figure out exactly what he's going to have to have. This will in involve having to shoot at people, so he's going to need some weaponry. Um, so, let's see. I'm trying to figure out... Um, phaser, okay. So if he was to pick up, well he could pick up a disruptor rifle or a disruptor pistol. So he's already out uh, 30 bars. We'll get him a disruptor uh, pistol. They're going to charge him 450 uh, strips. So now he's going to be in the hole for another 450 strips. Um, So if you don't understand exactly how this works, it works like this. There are slips, and then there are strips, and then we have bars. So 100 strips equals one, or 100 slips equals one strip. Um, 20 strips equal one bar. So, uh, and then there's also the currency of credits, which we're not using at the moment. We're using the slips and, and all those, the gold press latinum. So, uh, right now he's going to be in the hole for another 450 strips. Um, and it'll go from there. Uh, the Federation will give him his drink for free. It's a synthahol. It's not actual alcohol. Uh, and he'll kind of move on from here. So, as a man down on his luck, he's willing to take the chance. Um, let's see here. So we're going to have two characters here. I will have them kind of post up. We're going to use some clones for the characters that he's going to rescue. Uh, he's going to load up into a shuttle. Probably going to be just taking them out here in a minute anyways, but we're still going to get them in this shuttle. I don't have a... Nope, I do have something here. Um, yeah, we'll give them this. Got to give them a, a, a pew pew. 
So he's got a disruptor pistol of some sort. Overly priced one, but he's got one. So he's going to take off. Uh, so now we're going to have some rolls to do if we're actually doing this. Um, trying to get him to wherever his destination. Now I never came up with an idea for the destination. We can just talk this through. You can make something up. Um, uh, I mean, we could call it... Um, Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call the place he's got to go as Figmas 3, as in a figment of my imagination. Figmas 3, all right, which is going to be a mining outpost, and he's going to land on the outskirts. He's going to try and do a little bit of a scanning, being that we have a Starfleet shuttle. It's going to have limited scanning abilities. It's going to be an older shuttle, but it'll still work. So he's going to land on the outskirts. He will find that there's another shuttle out there, um, maybe even two, one for sure. And he's going to have to kind of jump out here, and we're going to have. So I'm going to, have to do this here. Um, at this point, now I can kind of come up with some stuff here. All right. So I'm going to kind of pause things so I can get some tiles going. All right, so um, just trying to play through things here, trying to figure things out how I'm going to work this. So we're going to transition to having, as best I can, a mine here. Okay. So what we're going to run into, and we're going to be parked outside. I'll move the shuttle out of the way. And then we're going to go into the mine. Hopefully we can do this. I'll try and keep an eye behind me so we can have a good sense of where everything is here so hopefully i don't have things off camera let's see here probably should have done this off camera but um and this isn't quite the the tiles i was thinking of using i was thinking of using a slightly different version of tiles here but these will work for at least to get us going here um All right. So I'm trying to move things around. All right, we're going to start off here. And what we're going to find is this is going to be a damp, dark uh, kind of area. Uh, sounds like a standard place to, to kind of be here. And we're going to keep going down the path here. Um, so as we look down, now I don't have any tricorders or anything else. Because remember, all I've really got on me is a disruptor pistol. Um, so I'm just trying to meander my way through on this. I think I'm going to have to try and see about cutting these down or something so I can make these work a little bit easier. Um, Okay, what I'm trying not to do is try not to have any big open rooms. Um, this is supposed to be kind of narrow corridors. Remember, they're kind of mining in this area. It's just kind of running straight on down. Uh, maybe we'll open up to that at one point. Um, I could see keeping these two here. Um, However you want to do this, uh, it's really going to be kind of up to you. Now, this isn't meant to be a very big, long mine or anything. It's not uh, intended for, for anything overly serious. Because remember, uh, as I'm running this, it's only me. Uh, you can elaborate this as much as you want. Make this bigger, longer, uh, a little bit more challenging if that's what you so wish. Um, I don't have any problems with that. Um, because I don't know how big of a group you're going to try and run on this. So really uh, my thought here is we can run this down at least this far. We could probably have one length in here of some sort. 
um, and just kind of have it match up here at the end. So really this is where we're going. I'm going to try and double check and make sure you guys can see all this as I'm trying to line this up somewhat. Just as these are our offshoots of the mine here. And this is just the head of the mine of how far they've kind of gotten down here. Um, yep, it looks like you guys can see everything. There's just going to be a space here. Have it go on down uh, however you want. So um, as I'm kind of looking down here, it's dark. I've got a flashlight to look. Uh, I'll give myself that much. Really, I don't have much. Uh, so I'm kind of at a, at a default. So with that being in that regard, if you guys are running more of a federation group or you have tricorders or other things like that, um, you can add extra difficulties. This is all going to be dark, so whatever you're rolling, uh, whatever you need, I would say add a little extra difficulty. So if you need, you know... Um, Trying to remember how to, okay. Instead of maybe needing a, a 10 to hit, maybe, you know, make it a 12 or a 15 or something. You know, add a little extra difficulty because of the light uh, or the darkness or whatever else. If you have tricorders and phasers, you know, you might be able to have a little bit of an easier time trying to see things. Maybe you have some better optics, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to keep this kind of basic and all that right now. So... As I start in, it's dark, dingy. Um, I don't really hear all that much initially going in. And as I start going down, we hit the corridors. I do hear some sound, some talking or whatever, but I can't fully make out where it is. So I'm going to kind of do a roll. Um, just for the off chance, I'm going to come kind of come out this way, and I'll kind of go around the corner. Now, when you go around the corner... I do a roll to see if somebody's there. I don't have, I do have dice. Like I said, I'm doing this more as a narrative. Uh, I'm just going to roll a regular six-sided die uh, that I believe is a six. That's a one. So one is going to be a, a combat here. Six, whatever is out here, there is nothing. And I can go around the corner again. And I get a five, so there's nothing. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as light as I can. For myself now when I come around here I will see I don't see anything offhand um, <clears throat> now do you go straight or do you take a left here it's up to you um, seeing that this is the main shaft I'd, I'd be looking uh, do I see anything here five no do I see anything here now, once you look down here, for sure, because this is where we're going to meet the people. Um, if you haven't run into anyone else, this is where our hostages are going to be. So, I'm going to put um, these two figures in here. Doesn't matter what, what they are. Uh, they're just hostages. And these guys, because they happen to have the old pew pews, they're going to be our aggressors. Um... They're trying to extort any information, uh, any extra materials here, um, and we're going to go through there. Now, go through your combat sequence, whatever it is, however big of a group you have. Make your character take out these guys. Make them that easy. You know, whether they're already hurt or whatever because they've been putting up with, with the detainees, uh, however you want to do it. You know, they've been kind of battered and bruised or they're just that low of a character that you can take them out. Maybe not by a lot, maybe just barely, but you take them out, okay? Make it so that way they make this. This is kind of key to the whole thing. Not saying it has to be, you know, you can always add in there some way that you kind of come back or whatever. But just so you start feeling like you're doing a little bit better, uh, we're going to go through and, and do our pew pew back and forth. We'll take out the first guy. We'll take out the second guy. Now from here, um, we'll be able to rescue the people. If if you're doing this as a free trader or whatever, 
you may want to have your characters being able to loot our aggressors here. And you would be able to find a one tricorder. They're both going to have disruptor pistols of some sort. Um, so you could grab that for extra gear. Um, maybe something you can sell later, whatever. And um, there's my, there's my die. So I'm going to do a 20 here. Um, yeah. So we're going to have six, uh, six strips of latinum. Okay. So six strips. Remember slips is the lowest strips is the, the mid grade and bars are our preferred. Um, so at least we have a little extra to try and get going here. Um, and then uh, plus two disruptors. All right, as I write all this down so I can kind of keep it in my head. Okay, so once we get through here, we're gonna start going out. And again, we're gonna roll. So you can make this as, as easy or as difficult as you wanna make this either way. Uh, as we start coming through, do we have extra people coming in? Um, so far as we go through, we have nothing. I get a one. So that means that when we come up to here, we have something else. Now the question is how many? We have four. I can't have four, not for one person. But you, you get it, you know, I'm just trying to keep this random. So maybe it's four... Uh, rats of some sort okay um, so maybe it'd be something else that would attack uh, something small then because I'm trying to play this out if you know what would make some sense we have some critters that are kind of trying to nest in here so some small rat type something or other and we'll kind of fight that through get them a little bit more experience a little bit better off and then we'll fight them off we'll sneak on by and we'll get out of here I would say even if, if you're doing this as a group, if you happen to tag them, they're dead. Uh, one, one damage or whatever should probably kill, kill off whatever rat this is, uh, something minor, uh, and then we'll, we'll sneak on out. We get out to the ship. I got a six. So we get to our shuttle. We take off. Now, again, adding that whole mysteriousness or whatever, because I don't know who all this is, I got a one. So now we're going to be attacked on the way out, maybe by the same group that's here. Maybe they were coming back down to off, offload them. Um, and I would do this one as a very lightly armed shuttle. Now, we should have some weapons on this one. I think Starfleet would give us some weapons. You can juke back and forth. You can kind of try and maneuver away from them. Uh, get it so that way it's it's nice and easy you just kind of disable their their engines and you sneak away something along that line um, and then we're going to get back so this is a very short easy starting mission gets everybody kind of going with some rolls and all that if you do have a couple extra people maybe you have someone actively trying to uh, work on your shields or un engine output or you know one person's worrying about uh, arming maybe it's a turret so they're actually at a station where they're they're actively trying to aim the turret to shoot back or whatever while you have your pilot going uh, stuff like that keep everybody involved here um, we're going to make it back to starbase 354 we'll get things patched up and we're going to kind of go from there now if you want to sell the extra guns now remember i bought them at 450 uh strips um, they're going to sell them or they would buy them at, I would say like 200. Okay. Um, getting half that value back. So if you wanted to sell them, you could sell them and maybe earn a little bit back. So you get 400 for the two of them. Um, If you had extra combat here and you want to just keep handing out, you know, extra pistols or whatever, you know, every one of them is going to be worth about 400 strips or uh, 200 strips. I'm sorry. Um, 
giving you an opportunity to try and get things going again. Uh, and then when we get cargo, remember I was trying to come up with commodities. Now we're not going to worry about the commodities on this one quite yet. I don't have the commodities set up on it on uh, Starbase 354. Uh, we'll get that one on the next one. So then when I come around for the next one, what kind of a Starbase do we have? So this would be it for our starting mission. We'll try and get another one going because uh, I was trying to have two in a, in a weekend. I'll see if I can keep that up or get that going again. If I can, great. If I can't, I'm sorry. Um, weekends that I work because I work every other weekend sometimes it's just not that easy to do uh, but we're going to try our best so with that that gets us a little bit of a start we got a little bit of a little bit of latinum in our pockets to be able to kind of do things um, you can play it out however you want if you want to have a credit credit bar or whatever that would actually have our balance on there fine uh, if you want to actually have them physically in hand fine too or a mixture however you want to work it, but uh, kind of a nice starting point. We have a little bit of uh, cash in our pocket to, to jingle around to make us feel a little bit better. We can stay somewhere nice, and we'll go, go from there. Thank you so very much for visiting today. I, I really do appreciate this. I enjoy when you guys get to sit around a pool table with me. This is where all the fun stuff really gets to be uh, when I can get back into doing this. Um, I know I've kind of been busy with other things, but we'll try and get things going back again. Uh, we're going to work on doing this as a Star Trek. The same concept could work very easily for doing some other stuff, whether it's a Star Wars or a, a Star Finder or whatever. You know, something along those lines. Add in whatever kind of critters you want to add in. Like I said, this is a, as a narrative. Um, just trying to have it go through. If at any time you lose people... Always add in an ability to try and, you know, something's there. Maybe there was a, a uh, medical kit that would get them healed. At least just enough to keep going. Uh, once they get back to the Starbase, they can get fully healed up. They can rest up and all that. Then they can get back out for the next one. The nice thing with them being aligned with Starfleet, they will get uh, the health care and everything else to be back up and running for the next one. Um... That's where I'm trying to keep things. You're, you can work with the Starfleet, but you're not Starfleet itself. It means that you do have to pay for things. You do have to kind of sometimes live in a little bit of squander. Um, in some of the older Star Trek books, I do have some prices. That's where I got the price of the uh, Disruptor pistol. Uh, they go for anywhere between 200 and 450 uh, strips of latinum. So I gave it the most amount. Uh, the phasers themselves are on a black market. That's why I did not give them a phaser. Now, if I did give them a phaser, maybe you could work out a deal with Starfleet and, and that. There is a price for that. Um, but I'm trying to keep things as, as close to what we would typically see in Star Trek lore. Except we're not Starfleet. We are, you know, as in, an independent trader. So, all right. We're going to end today's adventure here. Hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.